Well, good morning, everybody. Great to be together again this Sunday morning, and I hope you're having a great weekend. And uh, I hope you're coming to this service with a lot of enthusiasm and hope and expectancy that God is going to meet with us and really bless us this morning. Talking of hope, um, as I was saying in a, in a previous video update, I was so excited about getting on to uh, talking about prayer and our series on Let Us Pray that I omitted to come to the conclusion of the previous series that we were doing on hope. So we've looked at H, uh, holding on in the dark times. O, organise your life to increase faith. P, pursuing uh, God wholeheartedly and so I'm sure that you're full of hop right now but uh, to round that off and to fill us full of hope we're looking at the E of hope this morning at expecting the impossible so I want you to call to mind I'm, I'm sure you don't have to but uh, call to mind the uh, the thing in your life that perhaps you're looking at and it looks just like a mountain how on earth is this going to change in my life? Well, hopefully, this morning, we'll begin to understand how we can see some breakthroughs. But right now, as we start this service together, we're going to pray, and then we're going to worship the Lord in song. So, Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to come together again this morning in this way. Thank you that you are always with us, and over these weeks, we have seen you doing some amazing and wonderful things. Thank you for the ways in which you've moved in our lives. And thank you that this morning you come to this with great expectancy, great hope, great joy. This is the day that the Lord has made and we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. So lift our hearts, Lord. Lift our sights. Lift our expectation. Lift our faith levels. We're coming into the presence of God together and we long to see that you would rend the heavens and come down, join with us, and together this is going to be an amazing, amazing service. So thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's worship that wonderful God together with this song of worship. Savior, Redeemer, lifted me from the miry clay. Almighty, forever, I will never be the same because you came near from the everlasting to the world we live. The Father's only Son, because you lived and you died and you rose again on high and you are. For the world to live again Hallelujah For all you've done My Saviour, Redeemer Lifted me from the miry clay Almighty forever I'll never be the same because you came near From the everlasting to the world we live The Father's only Son Because you lived and you died And you rose again on high And you opened the way For the world to live again Everlasting to the world we live, Father's only Son, cause He came near from the everlasting. i 
Turn to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope, who could imagine so great a mercy, what heart could fathom such boundless grace, the God of ages stepped down from glory, to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living home. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living the one who set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my living hope Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. Out of the darkness, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Come on, let's declare that together. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe, Lord, out of the silence. The roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. It's Jesus, your Set 
Okay, well, if you can remember back to the last time we were looking at the subject of hope, holding on to hope, uh, you might remember that uh, we've been looking at Psalm 22. We've been using that psalm to, which is a psalm that is full of hope, even in difficult circumstances. We've been using that psalm to unpack the meaning of the word hope. And so as we come to the fourth installment of this, the E of hope. Let's have a look at the, the, the tail end of Psalm 22 and verses 27 to 31. And it says this, the whole earth will acknowledge the Lord and return to him. All the families of the nations will bow down before him for royal power belongs to the Lord. He rules all the nations. Let the rich of the earth feast and worship Bow before him, all who are mortal, all whose lives will end as dust. Our children will also serve him. Future generations will hear about the wonders of the Lord. His righteous acts will be told to those not yet born. They will hear about everything he's done. So, hope. That's what we've been exploring for three weeks, just a short while ago, holding on to and nurturing hope in times that are sometimes positive and sometimes difficult. H-O-P-E, holding on to hope in the darkness, organizing our lives to increase faith, pursuing life and in the, and the culmination of, of this, E, expect the impossible. This is probably the most challenging uh, aspect of of hope we might dare to hope that god would do something amazing we might even choose to organize our lives around that hope but to actually expect the impossible that is beyond the experience of many of us now king david who's writing uh this psalm that we're looking at at the moment starts from the position of my god my God, why have you forsaken me? And ends with the confident statement that the whole world will be worshipping God. Now, how can he have such a confident expectation of something that seems so unlikely, so far removed from his current experience of being in, in the darkness? He'd been given a vision of the future that fundamentally defined how he lived his life. So 2 Samuel 17 verses 18 and 19 says, Then King David went in and sat before the Lord and prayed, Who am I, O sovereign Lord, and what is my family that you have brought me this far? And now, sovereign Lord, in addition to everything else, you speak of giving your servant a lasting dynasty. Do you deal with everyone this way, O sovereign Lord? See, because he'd been given a glimpse of the future, he'd received a promise from God about the future, he was able to live confidently and full of hope in the present. Now, like I've been saying, Psalm 22 is a messianic psalm, a psalm that reveals the presence and the activity of the Messiah, his first coming, his death, and more importantly, his second coming, where he brings all things and all people under his lordship. However far away from current reality that seemed, David knew with absolute certainty that it would happen. 
You see, true hope is about confidence. It's about having a genuine expectation that God is going to do what he says he is going to do, whatever the current circumstances. Which begs the question, how confident are you? What are your levels of expectation in God? And by the way, there's a big difference between knowing what God can do and knowing what God will do. Knowing what God can do is all well and good. That it informs us. But what transforms us is having a confidence in what God will do. It's having a genuine expectation in your life that God is not only capable of doing amazing things, but being confident that he is going to do amazing things. It's wrestling with what the prophet Habakkuk wrestled with. He said, I have heard about you, Lord. I am filled with awe by your amazing works. In this time of our deep need, help us again as you did in years gone by. And in your anger, remember your mercy. That's Habakkuk 3 verse 2. I've heard all about what you can do. Now, Lord, I want to live in the expectation of what you will do. See, true hope is rooted in faith, and faith is not about wishing. It's about expecting. It is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen, according to Hebrews 11 verse 1. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. Now, that's true hope, and that's what leads us beyond knowing what God can do and into living lives with an expectation of what God will do. And David had a genuine expectation that despite the darkness that was surrounding him at that time, God would fulfill his purposes and restore this world to him. The whole earth will acknowledge the Lord and return to him. All the families of the nations will bow down before him, says David in verse 27. Now that must have seemed impossible at the time that he was saying it. Don't forget, just 26 verses earlier, he'd been saying, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why are you so far away when I groan for help? In verse 1, He's, he's looking at his circumstances. And in verse 27, he's taking a stand on God's promises and speaking them out. I know this is going to happen because God has said this is going to happen. I don't know when, but I confidently expect it to happen in God's perfect timing and in God's perfect way. Faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It's the choice to live in the expectation of the seemingly impossible. Now, David says, I can't currently detect the work of God in my life or in my situation, but nevertheless, I have confidence that one day, not only I, but the whole world will see the activity of God and turn back to him. He lived in the difficulty of today with his hope firmly fixed on the expectation of the future. Which begs the question, as I say, what is your expectation? What expectation of God do you live with? And how can we let that expectation give us hope for today? Well, by focusing that expectation on certain things, you need to focus. So we need to focus that at the expect, on the expectation that what God starts, he finishes. 
Now, this, as I've been saying, is a messianic psalm. Psalm 22 is a messianic psalm, a psalm that looks ahead to the life and the work of the Messiah and his death on the cross and his separation on that cross from his Father in heaven, but also his future hope. The fact is, the Messiah's first coming, which happened in history, was in the form of a lowly servant. His second coming, which will happen in future history, will be in the form of a conquering king. And he'll rule on earth for a thousand years, restoring everything to how it should be. People will see him as he truly is, and they will worship him. And David looks ahead to that promise and speaks it out in faith. And if God can fulfill those promises, then he can fulfill all his other promises. Specifically, he can fulfill all the promises that he has made in your life. So here's a fact this morning. God has begun a good work in you and he will finish it. Fact. Philippians 1 verse 6, and I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. God does not start something and then abandon the project. What he starts, he finishes. If you've invited Jesus Christ into your life, then God has begun a good work in you. Your life is becoming the shape that it was originally intended to be. He has begun the good work. Are you and I the finished article? Well, presumably not, because we're still alive. If we were the finished article, we'd be in heaven. There's still work to be done, but it has begun, and because it has begun, you can expect, you can be certain that it is going to continue. So expect more change. Never settle for what you are or where you are because God hasn't settled. He's got greater things in store for you, so raise your expectations. Don't accept a ho-hum life. You are worth more than that to God. Then there's the expectation of kingdom growth. Now, in this country, we've become generally so used to hearing depressing statistics about the decline of church attendance and the multi-faith reality that this country now is. And Christians generally lack confidence in their ability to share the gospel with their friends and family. And we wonder whether anyone would actually come to church if we invited them. It's great to hear of the wonderful things that happen in India and Africa and the Philippines, for example. But they never seem to happen here. In fact, the prospect seems just impossible. The challenge that God gives us is this. Expect the impossible. Expect kingdom growth. Expect church growth. Expect numerical growth. Expect it. Plan for it. Expect it. Pray for it. God's promise is that it's going to happen. Our children will also serve him. Future generations will hear about the wonders of the Lord. His righteous acts will be told to those not yet born. They will hear about everything he has done. Here's another fact for you this morning. The gospel has lost none of its power or attraction. We need to expect that it's going to change lives. Proclaim it Live it, demonstrate it, and expect it to change lives. For I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, 
the Jew first and also the Gentile. This good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scripture says, it's through faith that a righteous person has life. Romans 1, 16 and 17. You know, in one sense, this psalm, this Psalm 22, makes absolutely no sense at all. In just 31 verses, it swings from utter despair to confidence on a worldwide scale. But that's the power of hope. Not wishful thinking hope or fingers crossed hope, but genuine, God-given, Holy Spirit empowered hope. It can take you from the place of darkness to the confident assurance of what you hope for, even though you don't yet see it. Now, the reason this psalm is such a hope-filled psalm is because it, it, it's a messianic psalm. It reveals the Messiah, who is Jesus. And when Jesus is in the picture, we can expect the seemingly impossible. We can expect him to finish his good work in us. You can expect further life change. We can expect kingdom growth. By the way, I can expect further life change as well. We can expect kingdom growth in this world where the gospel is seen to have lost none of its power. And we can expect breakthroughs that seem really unlikely right now. Don't write off those breakthroughs that seem impossible because God hasn't. And if you're praying to know, if you're praying for people uh, to come to know Jesus personally, and you've been doing that for ages, and just don't give up, even if they don't seem to have moved an inch closer to Jesus Christ in that time. Don't give up on those family members, those friends, those work colleagues. And don't write off those comfortable, well-off people by thinking, what's the gospel got for them when they already have everything they want? In fact, don't write off anyone. Expect the impossible for people of all walks of life. Now, David looks ahead and he confidently proclaims what he sees by faith. All the power mongers are before him, God that is worshipping all the poor and the powerless too worshipping along with those who never got it together worshipping expect the impossible hold on to god in the darkness organize your life to increase faith pursue life and expect the impossible. For the truth is, nothing is impossible with God. Not the raising up of a family of churches and ministries around the world from absolutely nothing. Not the restoration of relationships or the fulfilling of dreams. Nothing is impossible with God. What do you expect a God of awesome, unlimited power to do? Now, think big at this point, all right? Don't just offer him a thimble and say, ooh, he filled a thimble. Offer him a bucket, a big one. Because God can do anything, you know, according to Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. Far more than you could ever imagine or guess, or request in your wildest dreams. He does it not by pushing us around, but by working within us, his spirit deeply and gently within us. Glory to God in the church. Glory to God in the Messiah, in Jesus. Glory down all the generations. Glory through all millennia. Oh, yes. What? do you expect 
Oh, just hope I make it to the end of another week, really. Oh, just hope, you know, just hope I make it. Just hope I make ends meet. Just hope for at least, you know, life to somehow muddle. What? What kind of a bucket's that? Expect the impossible. You could do that on your own. Expect the impossible. We have a God who is awesome, who can do amazingly, abundantly, more than all we ask or expect. What do you, I'll tell you what I expect right now. I expect that there are some people watching this right now who are thinking that is not what I understood the Christian faith to be all about. That is not what I was expecting. And my faithful expectation, my hope, my confident hope before God is that there'll be people here this morning who say, I want that. I want that in my life. I want my life to start making more sense than it has been. I want my life to be based on something more firm and positive and hope-filled than what it has been. I want Jesus in my life. And my hope my confident hope is that if that's you, then you'll invite Jesus into your life this morning. My hope, my confident hope, is that you'll not turn your back on this incredible, awesome, amazing God, but that you'll say yes to him this morning. Will you pray with me right now? And just ask him to come into your life and see the hope that comes into your life. And you'll start expecting the impossible and seeing the impossible happening. Will you? Well, if, if you're choosing today to take that step, that amazing step, I'm going to pray a prayer and I just love you to pray it along with me. So let's pray together. And Lord Jesus Christ, I see that you turn hopelessness into hope, dark despair into positive, faith-filled hope. And I want that in my life. And I recognize that life without you has not worked out, is not working out. And so I invite you into my life this morning. I ask you to be my Lord, my Saviour, my guide, my friend. I give my life over to you. Pray that you'd redeem me, save me. begin to guide me and I will follow you and trust in you all my days in Jesus name Amen now if you prayed that prayer if you prayed that prayer or something like that prayer then you have just started on the most amazing daring adventure of your life you have just had your name written in the book of life in heaven. You have an amazing, wonderful, glorious future hope. We love to hear about that. So why don't you just indicate on the screen right now that you've made that commitment. Just, just click that button to say, I commit my life to Jesus. We'd love to hear about that. And for all of us, just begin to expect... Not the least that God can do, the least that could happen. Just begin to expect the impossible. Because he can do incredibly, amazingly, exceedingly, abundantly more than all we ask or imagine. So to God be the glory. Amen. Every step filled with faith, Lord, I'm holding you close.
What an inspiring morning. I really hope and pray that you're feeling hope rising in you. Don't just expect the least. Don't just downgrade your hopes and expectations because you don't want to be disappointed or because somehow, you know, you can't see the the, the, the way forward. So how could there possibly be a way forward? Don't assume that God only sees things the way we see them. Don't forget, he's God and we're not. So let's be raising our expectations here. He says, ask of me, I'll give you the nations as your inheritance, the ends of the earth, just ask. So let's ask bigger, let's expect bigger, let's commit bigger. I really hope you have an inspiring, hope-filled encouraging week this week I know that God's going to be at work moment after moment day after day I know that he has got absolutely our best interest in his heart and I know he's with us and for us and he'll never leave us and never give up on us all these things are facts and so I pray that we live this week in the light of the truth God bless you, have a great week, and we will see each other again next Sunday. I may see suffering and not see why, even so. God is good all the time I may see suffering and not see why even so God is good all the time in the maze and the mess God is stronger in his grace my dead end is a comma but God is good, He's doing what He said He would. My God will always be true to His word. His name is great, He's mighty over all of this. I may see trouble, but God sees me through. I may see trouble, but God sees me through. my portion and nothing less after all God is good all the time God is my portion and nothing less after all God
God is good all the time. In the maze and the mess, God is stronger. In His grace, my dead end is a comma. But God is good. He's doing what He said He would. My God will. down and out but God has raised me up I know I'll falter yet but God has overcome I once was down and out but God has raised me up I know I'll falter yet but God has overcome I once was down and out but God has raised me up I know I'll falter yet, but God has overcome. I once was down and out, but God has raised me up. I know I'll falter yet, but God has overcome. God has overcome it all. Oh, oh, oh. But said he would my god will always be true to his word his name is grace he's mighty over all of this i may see trouble but god sees me through oh i may see trouble but god sees me through So's the 